around here. There's a bunch of crooks around here. You ain't supposed to be in that job, boy. Get out of there, man. No, that's a total no, man. Bad coming. Is, is my salary going up? Bahamian people got to wake up. This is my five cents, and I approve this message. The Bahamas Telecommunications Company to cut as many as 150 jobs, leaving the unions representing its workers crying foul. FNM and PLP MPs face off in the House of Assembly over who should take credit for Bahamar. Plus, the nation is in for a cold and windy week. And the director of the Valley Boys Junkanoo Group expresses his support for Junkanoo Carnival. We've got those stories and more coming up tonight. I'm Dana Smith, and NB12 starts right now. Tonight, looming job cuts at the Bahamas Telecommunications Company are not sitting well with the Bahamas Communications and Public Officers Union and the Bahamas Communications Public Managers Union. Scores of members from both unions flooded BCPOU Hall today as their leaders updated them on the pending job cuts. Union leaders say they believe government needs to step in and do whatever it takes. Jasmine Brown has the details in this report. Executives of both unions say the news of the pending layoffs came as no shock, but they insisted that they will not stand idly by and watch their members join the unemployment line. We know the casualties and the fallout, and we've seen the same old tricks being played again. We're not going to tolerate it this time around. The BCPOU and the BCPM news now, we're not going to stand idly by and let them set a budget on us and not wanting to uh, give us our just due. Evans and Thompson spoke to our news team shortly after their midday meeting. The men said rumors had been circulating since last year. They said during that meeting, members expressed their frustration. Obviously, cable and wireless have been playing games all along. Uh, for whatever reason, they, they believe that they can take advantage of the, uh, of the workers in this country. Um, they continue to want to have headcount reduction while they increase headcount in Miami, Florida. Um, last year, they did it by 88 percent. They are. They're definitely totally upset because um, most of our managers are pretty much in the 40s. And um, we know what's outside there um, in terms of employment opportunities. It was first reported in Wednesday's Nassau Guardian that BTC intends to offer voluntary separation packages to as many as 150 employees. The move will come as BTC prepares for the liberalization of the cellular phone market. Evan says he met with BTC executives on Tuesday morning in what he thought would be continued negotiations for an industrial contract. He added that from his understanding of the matter, BTC is pressured to reduce staff in order to reduce its operation costs. They've been playing hide and seek with us, both people, and so we, we're just tired of it. We can't even accept the, 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 the rationale given save for that they want to recognize a greater profit. There was always their plan that they wanted to reduce, and it was in your dailies, that they wanted to reduce operational expense by $100 million. 90% of, of, of that reduction will come by a headcount reduction. And so they're trying to make good on those headcount reductions. As they take the food off the tables of Bahamian workers, and having Bahamians now to take children out of private school and change, alter their way of life. The current staff count is just under 800. Evans says during that Tuesday morning meeting, the union was informed that employees will be offered packages. But Evans says before packages are offered, he says cable and wireless needs to sit down with union executives to work out their VSEPs. Now the union chiefs are asking the government to do the same for them as it did for the workers of Atlantis. The government practically owns the company also. So we're looking at um, whatever it takes. But we're not begging, mind you. Let's just get that part clear. We're not begging. We have to do what we have to do. But we definitely want to see justice at the end of the day. Reporting for NB12, I'm Jasmine Brown.
BTC CEO Leon Williams today offered no comment. A heated back and forth erupted in Parliament today after Long Island MP Loretta Butler Turner tabled the heads of agreement signed by the previous FNM government for the Bahamar project. It's all a part of Butler Turner's claim that the Ingram administration and not the PLP did the heavy lifting on the Cable Beach redevelopment. Kyle Joaquin tells us more. The Christie administration has laid claim to the multi-billion dollar mega resort known as Bahamar. However, Butler Turner, a former cabinet minister in the Ingram administration, believes the deal may not have been if it weren't for the FNM. Butler Turner brought the matter up during her contribution on Monday and laid the heads of agreement on the table Wednesday. She said during its last term, the FNM brought to conclusion an incomplete heads of agreement under negotiation between the Ismerlian Group and the government for the development of Bahamar. According to Butler Turner, the agreement, which the government had claimed to complete in 2005, provided for a $1 billion development. However, the Long Island MP says that in 2006, before any work had begun, the previous Christie administration entered into negotiations for the project to be doubled in size to $2 billion. But Turner didn't quite finish her sentence before West End Grand Bahama MP Obi Wilchcombe stood to his feet. We're not interested in her seeking to repeat what she said this past week and also seeking to have her edit what she said this past week. Have her lay the documents, Mr. Speaker. We will certainly look at the documents and respond to the documents at the appropriate time. We do not need another speech from Long Island, Mr. Speaker. But before Butler Turner got to respond, her leader, Dr. Hubert Minnis, rose to her defense. The member for Long Island presented an argument which this House and the entire public would have heard. She's now presenting documents to clarify it. It's only fair that she clarify what was said so that the Bahamas again can hear the real truth. It's only fair, Mr. Speaker. And it didn't end there. Wilch and Minutes continued a heated back and forth over the Long Island MP's tabling of the document. But things got even more interesting as the Deputy Prime Minister rose to his feet in defense of the government, saying it appeared as though the Long Island MP was trying to move the goalpost in her argument. The member for Cat Island, Rumkey and San Salvador, said he wasn't questioning her integrity, but just had an issue with the Long Island MP saying the last FNM government met an incomplete agreement. The member from West End uh, who laid that completed document on the house, on, on the table of the house prior to 2007, caught him and corrected that. That was the issue, right? And I went on, I mean, I said some other things. That was right. sponged. Right. Uh, uh, which, which, which supported the fact that uh, there was no, there was a completed arrangement. It was so complete that Mr. Ismerillion, the developer, had already ha had moved ahead and the work had started. Right? They, they had started. They had engaged Caesar's Palace, for example. Butler Turner then continued to table her proof that it was the previous Ingram administration that completed that heads of agreement. However, Davis argued that all the FNM did was stop, review, and cancel the PLP's heads of agreement. Seven years to the date, February 18th, 2008, this renegotiated um, heads of agreement on the 2006 agreement that they had entered into because the first 2005 agreement did not meet the criteria. This was the 2006 that was incompleted. That we completed. And I lay this, I lay this on the table once again, Mr. Speaker, for all to see. They renegotiated the deal that they met in place. It, it was, as I said, Mr. Speaker, what, was, what I said, Mr. Speaker, the Bama project, as was envisioned by and settled by the Christie administration, fell victim to the stop, review, and cancel of the Ingram administration. Eventually, House Speaker Dr. Kendall Major requested that the members not get into another debate and asked the Long Island MP to lay the documents on the table. Butler Turner then laid the certificate of the agreement that was laid in Parliament on the 18th of February 2008 to substantiate her claim. However, the argument continued on for about 10 more minutes before it was brought to an end and debate on the mid-year budget resumed. Reporting for NB12, I'm Kyle Joaquin. Constable Latorio Demerit, who died earlier this month after his motorcycle crashed into a utility pole on John F. Kennedy Drive, was laid to rest this afternoon in a full military funeral. A portion of JFK Drive was closed for the funeral procession, which saw scores of police officers escort Demerit's body to Lakeview Cemetery. Police Commissioner Ellison Greenslade and other senior members of the force were among the officers. Constable Demerit served on the Royal Bahamas Police Force 
for more than seven years. The 25-year-old officer died on Monday, February 2nd, shortly after 9 a.m. He was on his way to Odyssey Airport when the accident occurred. Commissioner Stephen Dean said at the scene of Demerit's death, anytime an officer falls, it sends shockwaves throughout the entire Royal Bahamas police force. Over at the magistrate's court, a 38-year-old Bulgarian man pleaded guilty to nine fraud-related charges this morning. Kostadin Petkov Karchev was charged with two counts of unauthorized access to a computer to commit and facilitate an offense, and seven counts of possession of forged documents. He was represented by attorney Roger Gomez and appeared before magistrate Darren's Roll Davis. It is alleged that on Saturday, February 14th, Karchev secured access to ATM machines at the mall at Marathon, which belonged to Royal Bank of Canada and First Caribbean Bank. It is further alleged he was found in possession of 50 forged gift cards. Police prosecutor Edna Pratt told the court during a search of Karchev's home by police, $76,621 in cash was found and confiscated. However, Magistrate Davis explained officers would need to file an additional charge against Karchev in order to confiscate that money. The matter was adjourned until tomorrow in order to give prosecution time to file the additional charge. And Karchev, who admitted his guilt, was remanded to Her Majesty's prison. His sentencing is expected to occur tomorrow. Well, the Bahamas is in for a cold night tonight, with temperatures dropping to the 50s in New Providence and even the 40s in some other islands. Chief Meteorologist at the Bahamas Met Department, Basil Dean, told NB12 the temperatures are the result of a cold front that's passing through the country. And that front, uh, there's going to be a very cold surge of air uh, that will see temperatures uh, dropping into the uh, mid-50s for us here in New Providence, uh, and that would starting tonight, going into tomorrow night. And for uh, islands such as Grand Bahama, Abaco, and the Bimini's, uh, they could very well see temperatures in the upper 40s uh, before it is all said and done. So a very cold uh, surge uh, approaching us, perhaps to coldest snap we would have had for the season. Dean explained although temperatures usually tend to warm up around this time of year as we get closer to spring, it seems as though the Bahamas is experiencing an extended cool season. But he said it's not unusual, although it doesn't happen very often. It's not unusual, I would put it this way, it's not very frequent uh, that we get temperatures uh, in the 50s, but uh, we have experienced them in the past. And uh, today we are just getting a taste of uh, what we have seen in our history. Dean is advising everyone to dress warmly this week as the cooler weather will persist until the weekend. Tonight and tomorrow will be the coldest, he said, with tomorrow seeing some high winds. Well, you're definitely going to need those warm clothing uh, tonight and tomorrow and perhaps right through the weekend, but more so uh, tomorrow uh, th uh, than any other part of uh, the week. The reason being the daytime temperatures are uh, something we should focus on. We're looking at some mid to upper 60s during the daytime. So certainly tomorrow it's got to be very cold. The winds will play a factor as well because we expect very windy conditions tomorrow. The winds will be increasing. So that coupled with the uh, cold air temperatures will certainly make things feel even a lot colder than the uh, mid to upper 50s. So. There have been a few scattered showers today, but Dean says those should clear up and things should stay dry until the weekend. He's also advising boaters to exercise caution in the water and swimmers to stay away from the shore. I would uh, say for boaters and particularly small craft operators because of the high winds we anticipate, uh, it will generate some rough seas, so we're asking boaters to exercise extreme caution. If you don't have to, it would be more advisable that you don't. Uh, also, for those who enjoy the seashore, particularly for swimming purposes, uh, this certainly would not be the best time for you to uh, venture into the water, so we again would ask our beachgoers to uh, just take a small break until uh, the sea is subsided. When NB12 returns, Mike LMP, V. Alfred Gray, and opposition leader Dr. Hubert Minnis face off over Bamsey. Stay with us.